Hey, Greg. Hey, Robert. How are you? Good. How are you? Not bad. So, for those... It's funny being on this side of the camera. I know. Are you feeling intimidated in yeah, the audition room? Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get the feeling. I know what anxious are going through. Yeah. So, just first of all, for people who don't know, Greg actually has a vlog site called theauditiontechnique.com which you give so much good information to actors and I recommend everyone go and take a look. So, to start with, what made you want to give this service to actors? Um, I come, this, this is the audition space. I spend most of my time in an audition space working with actors. My relationship with actors is I'm on back, at the back of the camera and the actor is in the front. And actors come in and they, they, they're working their scene. And I've seen so many people come in with distinctive, firm beliefs and attitudes and, and decisions about the audition scene. They've locked in exactly how they're, do, they're going to do the performance. And that's a stage technique. There isn't an understanding of film and TV being uh, uh, where the moments are spontaneous and inventive. Do you find that it's a fear of wanting to get it right and perfectionism? Yes, mm. absolutely. It's a, it's a fear of letting any um, um, moments creep in that are not controlled. The actor wants to control the environment as much as possible. And I believe that is the, is the foundation of problems of doing bad auditions. And so you wanted to help? Well the thing is, I'm saying take away your technique, take away your technique in principle and that's the antithesis of what drama teachers give you. Yeah. So therefore it's not that I'm, I'm against drama teachers or fighting drama teachers, it's just that the performance that's required in the audition space is a different performance. And it's more about the character rather than getting the scene right, which is what I get from your videos. That's right, yep. that's right. Okay, so I've asked some actors yes. some questions that they wanted to ask you, okay. and I've taken the most common three. Okay. So, do you see actors without agents? Someone said, I don't have an agent. How do I get called in for an audition? Um, I want to speak to people, especially, and this, is, this applies especially with advertising. When you draw up a list for a casting session, um, and you've got all the actors' names there, um, and all the agents are listed there. When the director comes in and he sees someone that doesn't have an agent, he goes, oh, this casting director knows everybody because they even know people without an agent. So the point I'm making is there is actually a benefit to not having an agent if, if you know how to, how to manage the communication with the casting director if you are in touch with the casting director, if they know about you. So that is the handicap with not having an agent, that it reduces your communication skills, your, your communication link to the casting people, but it is not a problem not to have an agent. So how would someone approach you? Um, the many weird and wonderful ways. How do you stay in touch with somebody that sort of, you know, when there are so many people? That's kind of one of the things we go into on the audition technique. Um, it, it, there's so many varied ways, but now the digital age, the social media age, has opened so many more doors for, for actors to sort of have a connection to a casting director. So um, there is no one way to do it. There's no, I can't give you three things to do and you will succeed. Um, because if you walk into a room and you're a great storyteller, a great raconteur, you can tell great stories, but somebody else you say, tell a story to, and they're all at sea. Mm. We've seen that in dinner parties. We see that when people arrive at a dinner party. Some people are really comfortable in a space, a foreign space with strangers. Other people aren't. It's just about playing to your skills and being yourself, being natural. Yep. Great. So that hasn't answered the question about how you stay in touch if you don't have an agent, because there is no, no one, one answer. answer. Yeah. Okay. Question two. What common qualities do you see in actors who make an impression on you? So, common qualities of successful actors. Mm -hmm. One of the things I see a lot in the audition space, and it's something that I, that I do sort of speak to actors about, is they run to the heavy drama, they run to the emotional conflict that's in a scene. And in terms of sort of drama training, you, you, you're educated, you're, you're trained to go to the drama in the scene. But in film and TV, the drama in the scene is not put in by the actor. It's actually put in by the editor. 
Mm. Now that's, that's, that's I was um, about to say, write up. <laughs> no, not the, the writer, because yeah, in fact, just... I believe film is an editor's medium. Yeah. A theatre is, is an actor's medium. Um, but film is an editor's medium. It's the editor that creates the highs and lows in the scene. So therefore, actors that come in and try and play the, the big drama, the big conflict, is wrong. They're showing their acting technique. Harder th a harder thing, or something that I find so rare in the audition space, is appeal. Is warmth and appeal. Actors don't want to play just nice and warm. But so therefore, it's the, it is the rarest quality that I find in the room. Oh, so you find aggression, and they want to go towards the anger side of things and show how high they can... That's right. Come, how they more drama, there. more conflict, yeah. more, more, more aggression. Yeah. More to be a tough... I've got to say, yeah. dare I say, especially females. They want to play tough women. <laughs> they want to play strong women. Yeah. And in fact, what we're looking for is women with vulnerability. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. Um, so did that answer what common qualities? Appeal. Appeal. Warmth. Energy. Yep. Charm, vulnerability, you know, all of those are these soft, non-confrontational adjectives. We go, no, that, 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 that's not my acting training. That's right. That's right. It's not your acting training. And that's why it's so hard to find in the room. Yeah. Okay. Three. If I do a bad take, is it okay to ask, can I do it again? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It depends on how the time is running. But if you go all the way through the take, my advice is can you diplomatically fluff the take? Meaning? Meaning, if you're about a third of the way, in, if, if, you've, if you're past a third, it's too late. But if you're up to about a third of the way through your audition, I'd actually drive on and say, uh, look, sorry, uh, can we start again on that? I'm just, ah, just lost it, sorry. Do you know what I mean? It's about, it's about stopping the take yourself. Now, you can't say, if you turn around and say, I'm sorry, can I do another one? I wasn't happy with that. That's not going to cut it well because actually what you're doing is you're asking for more of the casting team's time. You're asking for more time from the casting director and if they're running late. So my advice is, is, to, um, is to fluff it, mm. is, to, is to drop out of the audition. But you've got to do so in a very diplomatic, professional way. Yeah, and I guess that's a skill in itself, just being in this room and auditioning. is a complete separate skill set to what you learn in acting school. That's exactly right. And that's a, that's a lot of the, the, the reason why the audition technique came to being, because no one's teaching what happens. See, you know, you get into the waiting room, you have all that tension and nerves, but whatever, whatever you feel in the waiting room, it gets ratcheted right up as soon as you walk in the door. Yeah. Okay? And if there's only the casting director and you have a good relationship with the casting director, maybe it's okay. But when you walk in the room, just, before, just recently I had um, a producer and a director and a star in the room and people just, just do it like a rabbit in the headlights. Understandably. Understandably. But that's what you're going to be faced with once you walk in the room for your 10 minute opportunity or whatever it is. Great. Well, there are the three questions from the actors. Is there anything else you wanted to put out there? Um, it's the, the path to casting is really is, is 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 there is no one path to casting. In the same way, there's no one path to acting. Um, the point I'm making is is there's a great varied collection of casting directors out there internationally. You know, they come from different backgrounds. Many, many years ago, they came from a, um, uh, an administrative background. You know, if they, they organised things well, then that made them a good casting director. The point being is, is you have to work at having a relationship, having a connection with people that sometimes are not creative or sometimes are stressed because they're running late. But just make sure when you walk into the room that you work out where the casting director's feelings are and the attitude is and you fit in with the room when you walk in. Um, it's a bit like walking into a party. You can walk into a party and it's just going off and maybe there's a lot of drugs around the room or something like that, but you just go, I'm not fitting in here. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so therefore you, you have to try and fit in with the vibe of the room, with the vibe of the casting director. But as we said at the start of this, so often what actors do is they come in and they've locked, they've locked in 
what they're going to deliver. They've locked in what they're going to do and they have no ability to sort of, you know, to break out of that. I'd like to encourage people to walk into the room and just go with the flow. Having been well prepared and then just letting it go. That's right, and then forget everything you prepared yep. and walk in the room and go with the room. Yep. Great. Wonderful advice. Thank you <laughs> so much. And um, Pleasure. make sure you go visit the auditiontechnique.com. I'll put a link up after this and we'll speak to you guys soon. Thanks, Greg. Bye.